Hey, what's up guys? So we are trying something a little bit new here. I know it's been a really long time since I have posted a video on YouTube, and that's because I've been very busy. There's a lot been going on in my life, and uh, I'm actually gonna talk about that a little bit later in the video. But right now, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Audi. You can see it back here in the background. Still doing great. Had it for almost a year now. It's got about 9,000 miles on it. Um, so yeah, I wanted to put together a video just to show you guys how you can disable that annoying auto start stop feature in the new uh, Audis that have come out. A lot of A3s, S3s, the facelifts have that now. So uh, let's go take a look at it. It's the first time using uh, Facebook Live, so this is kind of weird for me, but we'll see how it goes. So one of the things you're gonna have to have to be able to do this is this little thing called OBD11. And this is actually a uh, really great tool because you can do modifications with the, uh, I guess in the system itself, you know, software modifications. And it's all like convenient stuff, stuff that the car probably should have come with from the uh, actual factory. So this thing, um, I can actually post a link down below in the description for uh, where you can pick it up. I think the pro version of it was like $80, but I will say it's worth every single penny. So it's real easy to use and you do have to have an Android device to be able to use it. So I'm actually using an old, uh, what is this? Galaxy S3. Hasn't been used in years, but I just use it as like a Wi-Fi device now. So to be able to use this, all you gotta do is you plug it into your port, your OBD11 port or OBT, OBD, two port so you plug it in down here plugs right in hopefully you can see it in there so you plug it in there you will put the car in accessory mode And then what we're gonna do is actually go into the app here. Yeah, whatever. And basically, let's go to the home screen. So it's a little app here. I don't know if you guys can see it, OBD 11. Click on that. And this is the main interface on it. And all you do from here is you gotta make sure that your Bluetooth is enabled because this does work through Bluetooth. And then you'll click on connect and it'll take it a couple seconds for it to connect on here. I hope this video is not too uh, shaky for you guys. Doesn't seem like the image stabilization works too well on Facebook or uh, YouTube Live. You see any comments on here? Again, this is the first time I'm using this, so I'm not really sure exactly how the YouTube Live works. So it's pretty cool so far. All right, let's see. Let's get this thing connected here. There are lights within this little box. You probably can't see them right now, but it's daytime, so you probably can't see it. It usually doesn't take this long to connect. So, let's exit this. Let's try it again. So anyway, while this thing is trying to connect, um, I'm gonna talk about why I haven't posted a video in a while. And like I said, I've been really busy over the past, uh, I guess, month or two. Um, I did put a deposit down 
own a brand new construction home. So that actually just started yesterday, they were starting to build it. Um, going through all that kind of stuff, signing paperwork and, you know, working with the builder and all the loan companies, all that kind of crap. It's time consuming. So that is what I've been doing um, over the past month. That along with school, almost done with that. Uh, I just finished, I guess my summer semester. I had two classes over the summer and that's about done in two weeks. I'm gonna start back up for the fall semester. Luckily, there's only one class and that's the final class of my MBA program. Thank God, I'm so glad that it's gonna be done. Um, really looking forward to being finished with that and having a ton of free time. In fact, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with all that free time. But anyway, this thing is not connecting for some reason and it doesn't surprise me because whenever you try to do things live, things do not work correctly. So anyway, let's see if... Weird, let's do this. So I guess instead of showing you how to... What can I do? We'll go ahead and stop this and I'm just gonna show you around the app a little bit here. So, go into my garage, and obviously I have the 2017 Audi S3. Click on that, and what you can do is, you can see all this different info about your, your car. So you have info, apps, um, it does do gauges when you're connected to it. Um, and it'll show us all kinds of different information. I don't think it's gonna bring it up now because I'm not, okay, yeah, it does. So you can see, engine fuel, I mean, there's all kinds of crazy stuff in here, engine oil temperature. So this is actually live data within here. And um, you do have to be connected to the actual uh, OBT, OBD11 um, sensor that's connected in the car. And I'm really not sure why it's not connecting right now because I've never had this issue. Keep bouncing back to this, see if it connects. I'm wondering if it has something to do with uh, not having an internet connection on this since it is just a Wi-Fi device. And really, I'm not super familiar with these uh, Android devices. I'm more of a uh, iOS fan. Baltimore Gymnastics Public. Let's try to connect to that, see if that helps. Weak signal, probably will not. Not in range. All right, whatever. Anyway, let's get back to the app. Which is still trying to connect. All right, so let's go back into the, all right, so we get back in the garage. And what it does is you can do, it's basically like a VCDS system. So um, you can do all the long coding in here. You do have to have the pro version, which is the one that's like $80, um, $70, $80, something like that. But if you want to, you can actually use these apps. And what it is, is they have these credits in here. And every time you log into the app, it gives you, I think it's like five free credits. Every day you can get five free credits by watching a ad. So you can go there, accrue these credits. You see I have 135 of them. And you can actually adjust the settings within the car using these apps. So for example, on the comfort turn signals, you know, if you click on that, you can select a value here and you can actually change it between how many times your turn signals blink when you, you know, do that light press on the actual turn signal. And it'll just use up 10 credits within your bank that you have. Out of my 135, I would use 10 of them. And there's all kinds of different things in here. You can, you know, turn the DRLs to function with your turn signal. You can leave that so it's on. Um, hey there, Bloodwork91. You are the first comment on here. That's actually my first face or uh, YouTube. I keep saying Facebook Live. I don't know why I say that, but it's my first YouTube Live comment. You can adjust the uh, sound actor. So you can see, you know, 100% obviously is what it comes with from the factory. And you can actually turn this all the way off if you get tired of that, like, weird kind of fake sound in your car. 
So I've used that. Um, I have disabled the auto start stop uh, seat belt warning. You can turn that off as well. Obviously you probably don't want to do that um, in some places because that's illegal. Why would you want to do that? Don't do that. But you have the option. Um, if you decide that you want to go in there and actually like do your brake pads yourself, there's like this weird kind of function with the Audis um, that the rear brake, I guess calipers lock themselves with the parking brake. Um, when you try to do that, so you actually have a thing in here. Where is it? To where you can, yeah, brake pads replacement. And you can actually do that here. So you don't have to take your car to the dealership and pay them, you know, exorbitant amounts of money to have your brake pads done. You can do it yourself. So that's a really great feature of this. I'll probably be doing that at some point. I only have 9,600 miles on the car now. So. I'm a ways off from doing a brake pad replacement, but it's good to have that option. And you can also reset your, uh... what do I think about the RS3? Is it worth the money? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, I absolutely love the car, just like probably everybody else on the planet that's into Audis and especially that, that like A3 line. And the sound of that five cylinder is amazing. Um, for the money it is a lot of money. I think like if you want to get a well option one, they're what, 62 grand? Something like that. So that's that's a lot of money for the car. Me being a finance person, um I probably would wait a couple of years until they uh you know start getting some used ones on the markets because those things I have the feeling there's gonna be some depreciation hits on that and that's a lot. Does this void the warranty at all? That's a good question. Um, I really can't answer that. Um, I would do it at your, what's up Tony? I would do this at your own risk. Um, I have heard issues of the TD1 flag. You know, you hear people talk about that, but that's really comes down to like actual modifications of the ECU when it comes to like your engine and stuff like that. So I don't think that these kind of changes are going to throw any flags because it's really kind of real minor stuff you're just unlocking features that are already in the car that they kind of like disabled here in the United States so I, I don't know I would just say do it at your own risk I mean obviously there's a risk with doing any changes like that that they if you get some dealership that's a complete asshole they could obviously like screw you over by doing that so do this at your own risk but some things that I've done obviously told you I did the um, sound actor, I messed with that a little bit. Uh, what else did I do? The Earl's off of the hammer. I mean, there's just a lot of stuff in here. Now, because I can't connect to this, I can't really show you guys the exact way to disable the auto start stop feature. And the reason that I disabled it is because in the summertime, when you come to a stoplight, the car will turn itself off like the engine itself, but the AC still runs. It just runs at a lower setting and it doesn't really pump out as much cold air. So it actually gets really hot in the car until the car restarts itself because it notices that there's too much draw being pulled from the battery, I guess. Um, so I just disabled it because of that. And I also got annoyed by the car turning off when you're going to make a left-hand turn with oncoming traffic, it's kind of dangerous, so I really didn't like that, so I turned it off. But anyway, how you would do it is, once this actually connects, you can actually get into the long coding of the uh, the actual, I guess, car itself, and there'll be a little button that pops up here, you can click on that, and you would go into, I believe it's like setting 19, which is, um, gets into like the engine dynamics or something like that, and you can go to adaptation, I believe it's 19, and you would actually just change the value. I'm gonna post these directions down below in the description because it's easier for me to type it out as opposed to talk to it right now. If I could show you on here, it would be very easy to show you, but I can't do that. So I'll put the description and put it down in the description. But basically you go into the adaptation and you're gonna change the value from the, um, did I know that brake pressure can control? I hope you guys can hear that. There's somebody ripping on a car out here right now. <laughs> yeah, 
yes, I did know that if you lightly feather the brake that it you know, doesn't make it so that the car stops, but still that's kind of annoying. Whereas I can just press the brake all the way down now. Show us your settings for the Bang & Olufsen sound system, Eugene. Subwoofer, it does not have that setting. And I've seen like a lot of people talk about that. So let's see. We're totally getting derailed here from the original point of this video, but that's okay. So this is what I have. I have treble, bass, balance fader, sound effects, speed dependent volume control. And I heard something, or at least I read something about that being like in the new MMI system. So maybe I just don't have it. Is there, does anybody know if there's a way to see what version you're in? System maintenance maybe? System version information. So I have software version 0694. I don't know what any of this should mean, so. But yeah, I don't have that subwoofer setting. I am taking the car in for its uh, service. Enabling traffic jam assist, low speed. I don't, I don't know the answer to that question, I'm sorry. So Bloodwork says that it might have something to do with the country that we're in, the reason that we don't have that subwoofer setting. That's, that could be true, I, I don't know. Um, Yeah, Eugene, I don't, I don't understand that. Why would some have the subwoofer setting? I know there's a subwoofer in the car because I do have the Bang & Olufsen system, so, you know, I don't, I don't know why I don't have it. You know what I'll do? I'll ask them when I go in to have the car serviced uh, in September, early September, and I'll see what they say about it. And I'll get back to you guys. So anyway, back to this. God, we keep getting derailed here. So back to this. You go into, um, I believe it's like vehicle settings 19 or something like that. And then in the adaptation, you can go down to, you'll find like an auto start stop system in there. And you would actually change the voltage value from, I believe the default is like 7.1. You just move up to 12. So basically what's happening is the car is, it's setting like this baseline. It's like kind of like an if statement. So it's saying that if the car is above I believe it's above, above the 12 volts, no, below 12 volts, below 12 volts, because it doesn't make sense, your car wouldn't be above 12 volts, it's not good, below 12 volts that it will not trigger the auto start stop system. And before, like in the default setting, it's set at like 7.1 volts, so if the car were to be sitting, you know, at a stoplight or whatever, and the voltage dropped below seven, it automatically kicks the car back on. So when you change it from 7.1, to the 12, it's not triggering that if statement. So the car just constantly runs. So you're kind of just overriding that little, I guess, software coding in there. It has not, I have seen no negative drawbacks of doing that. And um, I'm really glad I actually changed that over. But again, I'll put some, uh, I guess, like directions in the description of this video on how to do that. So anyway, that is what I wanted to show you guys today. I really wish this damn thing would connect. I'm really not sure why it's not happening. I think it has something to do with me not having any kind of um, any kind of internet connection out here. How did I came up with the name for the channel? I don't know. I just thought about it. That blue S3. It's a blue S3. I just got it. It is that blue S3. I, I don't know. I was a. I don't know. I just picked it. I thought it was cool. It went well. So again, this is the first YouTube live video that I've done. I'm still getting used to it, playing around with it. Like I see there's a comment button here. And for some reason I can't see all of your, oh wait, there we go. I can see all your comments. That's awesome. Maybe I'll have to do this more often, guys. All right, so let's put the background here. All right, so I showed you guys how to do that. Um, kind of showed you how to do it. We talked about some cool stuff. Let's see, let's read some of these comments. Let's scroll over. Nice, thanks for all the comments, guys. This is pretty cool. And my fingers get in the way of the camera here. Sorry. Can you show us settings? We went through all that. OBD 11 allowing traffic jam assist feature in North American. 
So maybe to address that, so we talked about the traffic jam assist. My car is equipped with the um, adaptive cruise control. Um, I It works pretty well in traffic, so I don't understand what the difference is between traffic jam assist and the adaptive cruise control. I think it might be that it just works at a lower speed setting, possibly, I don't know. What other comments we got in here? This probably looks really awkward to you guys because I'm like staring at the screen and like reading comments, but the, I don't know. All right, so I think that's all the comments. I've addressed all of them. Guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, we did hit a thousand subscribers on the channel. I guess it was probably a couple weeks ago, so that's awesome. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, and he's saying he's allowed your car to steer without an auto disable time. Another good question. Um, I'm sure that you can do it using this app. You would have to go in to find some of the coding for it. Um, you know, it's, I think there's, I use, I go on audisport.net and there is a VCDS um, thread on there and there's a lot of good information on there. So you might want to check that out. I think they have that in Europe. Are you talking about traffic jam assist, Jim? It's so nice out here, guys. Oh, the auto steer. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. In Europe, they get a lot of stuff that we don't get here, so I'm really jealous of all them. Um, we kind of screwed on some of the features here. Like, they got that exhaust, um, the revised exhaust tune. Or exhaust note sounds so much better than our cars here in the United States but whatever um, so it's kind of weird to focus here because like I am trying to talk about things but then I see your comments pop up and then I like want to address them right away so I'm, like getting derailed this is it's actually kind of cool though it's fun but anyway if you guys don't have any more questions again we're gonna go ahead and end the video um, I see like here's another question Come over to Germany, yes, I would love to be able to do that. Um, maybe my next car, I'll do European delivery and then I would go over to Germany. That would be freaking awesome. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and end it here. Um, again, I told you guys that I hit a thousand subscribers, a, uh, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that's really awesome, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I've had the channel going for about a year now we have over a thousand subscribers and over 300,000 views. To some people, that's not a lot. Uh, to me, it's freaking awesome. I really appreciate you guys, you know, the support that you guys give me. Um, again, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and like the video. Um, as always, don't forget to reflect and never settle.